Now let's try naming this compound. Let's start by numbering the parent chain. So here's the longest chain. So what would be the name of the parent chain here? Okay. And what's the locator for the substituent? Four. Right. But now we have a difficulty, which is that the substituent is complicated. This is what we could call a branched substituent, or a complex substituent. Not only, it's like the substituent has a substituent on it. All right. So we don't really have a straightforward name, from, a straightforward way of naming this. All right, um, well, there's an official way of naming this that's kind of complicated that I don't think you guys are going to learn. Instead, you're going to learn the common system. And the common system is just to learn some special names for the common branched substituents. Um, so the special name for this is the one that you remembered. Well, how many carbons do we have total in this substituent? Three. Three. Do you remember what's the root for three carbons? Good. And it turns out this is called isopropyl. Just like you said. Could I ask what, what else you would name that if it was complicated, just because I'm curious? Sure. So um, then we would have to number the substituent. So here would be the numbers for the substituent. Uh, and so here I would have, this is a, So the main chain in the substituent has two carbons, so that would be ethyl. The main chain in the substituent has two carbons, so that's ethyl. But the substituent has a substituent on it. Well, what type of substituent is on the substituent? Well, it's a methyl group. So it would be called methyl ethyl. And what's the location of the methyl group in the substituent? It's on the number one carbon. So this would be the full uh, official name for the compound. Um, we have this name, the substituent, with the substituent on it. This is what's called IUPAC naming, which you, you do learn when you take organic chemistry. You do learn how to do this in organic chemistry. Um, this is the official way of naming this, but this is such a pain that actually real chemists commonly don't use these. They commonly use these common names uh, instead. They can just eyeball this and say, aha, I recognize that as an isopropyl. Um, but here's the official way of naming this. Uh, they put it in parentheses to show that there's a substituent on the substituent. All right, so it's still pretty logical. Uh, we just uh, treat the substituent like it's its own little parent chain uh, and has a substituent on it. All right, but I don't think you guys are covering that, this, this term. No. This doesn't look familiar. Okay, so that was just uh, a detour for interest. You guys are, you only have to name the, the, uh, the branch substituents like this. So why is it iso? Uh, just because that's the historical name that's been or come up with. the split of two? Is yeah. that what it means? Um, like, kind of, yeah. When a that, that's actually true. When a substituent splits into two at the end, that it gets the iso. That's right. Uh, when a substituent splits into two at the end, it does get that iso term. Iso means the same, well, this splits into two similar groups at the end, I guess. That pretty much just has to be memorized. Okay. Again, this is a less systematic naming system than this one. It's just something that's uh, accumulated historically. All right, so we won't use this approach. But these are the two ways to name complex or branched substituents. Here's the official IUPAC way, and here's the way you're going to use in your course, which is the common system. OK, so we would recognize this as isopropyl. Um, it's easy to remember that it's propyl because it has three carbons total. Uh, I shouldn't have erased that, but remember in the IUPAC system, this would have been called an ethyl group because the main chain has only two carbons. But in the common system, we base this, this name on all of the carbons. In the common system, we're basing this name on the fact that there's three carbons total. Now, I wouldn't want to confuse that with this. This would just be four propyl octane, right? This would just be the normal propyl group. And here we have four isopropyl. So in both cases, there's a three carbon substituent. But here it's a straight three-carbon substituent, and here it's a branched three-carbon substituent. So when do we need to use these weird names when we have branched substituents? Uh, 
Um, so let's try naming this compound. Let's try to work that out. Well, let's start with the parent chain. Except it's not dectane, it's just decane. Oh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of these end in T, but they don't all end in T. All right, now um, what's the location of the substituent? Five. How many carbons total are there in the substituent? Four. Wait, four. Yeah, four carbons total. Uh, what's our general name for a substituent with four carbons? Butyl. Butyl. But this is a branched butyl. So how should we name this branched substituent based on the patterns that we've learned so far? So would it be set butyl because it's not like that? Well, uh, the pattern that we learned earlier was that if you branch into two at the end of the substituent, that's called iso. Right. So this would be isobutyl. Okay, that's, that's more than quite fair um, to, 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 to ask that question because just looking at this one example isn't quite enough to establish the pattern. But now we've seen what the pattern is for ISO. ISO is when the substituent branches into two methyl groups at the end. So it's five ISO? Oh, okay. Right. That's, that's five okay. isobutyl decane. Okay, I, I can do the it branches into two Yeah, so ISO just means that the end of the substituent branches into two methyl groups. ISO means the end of the substituent branches into two methyl groups. Five isobutyl decane. Wait, into two methyl groups? Here's a methyl group, and here's another methyl group. Oh, I so see. So the end okay. of the substituent branched into two oh, methyl groups. Okay. Oh. That's just a um, a way of memorizing what they what the chemists mean by iso. Oh. So it should be easy to see that this is butyl because there's four carbons total. Notice that there's no point in numbering the substituent using the common system. We don't need to number the substituent. Uh, and when we see that there's four carbons and the end of the substituent branched into two methyl groups, we've got to memorize that that's iso. Okay. So theoretically, you could also have isopentyl or isohexyl, but in actual life, people just usually use these names for propyl and butyl groups, so we'll stick to that. Okay. 